What's up, everyone? I'm Be The Installer, and my wife, Jen, here. Hey, guys. And we have the Hisense U8H here, a mini LED from Hisense. I think it's their first mini LED, and I'm stoked that Hisense sent the 75-inch version of this so we can see how it looks in this bigger room. So I'm kind of jealous. Brandon got to see what this looks like at CES last year, and he didn't take me. He made me stay home. Uh, maybe that'll change this year. But I'm excited to see what this mini LED looks like um, with our football games that we like to watch, movie night and even my awesome Lego games I like to play on the weekends. <laughs> you know, got to have that <laughs> high resolution for those. So if that sounds good, please smash the like button, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell to be notified when I upload a new video. And our question for today is, this is the first mini LED from Hisense. We've also got some from Sony and LG and Samsung. Would you go with a Hisense version or would you want to go with a more recognizable version that we've seen before? Let me know in the comments below. Let's get into it. You ready to do this? I am ready to do this. All right. Let's get into it. We got the back facing forward because I guess Wolverine delivered this TV here. So we got scratches all over it. So we got it backwards. We'll flip it around in a second, but let's see what we got in the box. Let's check it out. Yeah. So if we start over here, it's like we have part of the bracket. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Hisense has some wacky feet for the TVs, but we'll oh. put them together in a second. I love a good wacky foot. There we go. That, that looks like that's it. So we might have to dig a little bit deeper for more uh, toys. All right. We, we, should we just take the top off? Let's do it. So we got to pull those clips on the side. You want to get that side? I shall get these ones. It's always crazy when it's not a 100 inch TV. It's like, oh yeah, it's a little bit smaller, it's so 75. Small. All right, we just lift it straight off the top. All right. All right, so we spun this around. Let's take off this styrofoam and the cardboard and let's, uh, let's see what this sucker looks like. Let's do it. Take these off. All right, I'll take this. I got it, I got it. We're probably gonna have to lay this down. So we might need to put some of the some of this styrofoam down here and lay the TV on it. So let's uh, let's make sure we can do that because I think the stand is kind of in the front and the back, which makes it a little awkward to put on unless you have it like that. Okay. All right, do you want to pick this up and lay it down on that styrofoam right there? Sure. All right. Nice and easy. Look at those muscles, Jen. You're tough. You're strong. Perfect. Ah, they found the remote. There it is. Nice. We'll check that out in a second. Cool. Okay, well, let's uh, get into these wacky feet. Let's see what they're like. <laughs> Looks like there's two spots we can put them, like an inner and an outer spot. The cool part faces forward. It's got a little clip on the back here to uh, to run your cable management through. So that's pretty cool. And again, I think they go they can go wider or narrower. It's only like a six inch difference, but you know, it's cool enough. Pretty simple. So let's just put the four screws in. All right, you ready to go, Jen? Let's do it. Nice. Caesar's over there chasing shadows. Mm -hmm. Get it. There we go. You're the best, Jen. You're the best. Yeah. All right. You want to stand this up now? Let's stand it up. Should be an easy tip. All right. I like it. Cool. Get the styrofoam out of the way. Let's get that stand behind it and get the TV up for people to look at. What do you think? Let's do it. Right. Whistle while we work. <laughs> like it. <laughs> cool. Thanks for the help, Caesar. Yeah, you're so helpful. So we're ready to put it up. Let's do it. Let's go. One, two, three. Good job. Good job. Dun dun dun. dun. Unveiling. Let's take the top off. Here. The magical reveal. Mm. All right, Jen, do you want to get all the plastic off? Yes. Let's I do. do it. Let's do it. Oh, I got it started for me. Good? Yep. All right. That's a good looking TV right there. Yep. All right, you wanna check out the back? Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. Let's do it. 
So we have a larger than normal pattern there. I think it's like a 600 by 400 pattern. Maybe it's like a 500, I don't even know, it looks weird. That won't work with every TV mount. So make sure you have the 600 by 400 wide pattern if you're gonna mount this TV, cause that's not the typical 400 by 400. Not a huge deal. And then there's also a speaker in the middle. It looks like some sort of subwoofer. It's probably got some downward firing speakers on the bottom of the TV as well. And then here on the right side, of course, you have the HDMI ports. There are four HDMI ports in total. Two of them are 2.0 ports and two of them are HDMI 2.1 where you can game at 4K at 120. So we'll have to check out gaming, of course. And then it does have the next gen ATSC 3.0 tuner so you can tune in channels at 4K and they'll have Dolby Atmos and other things that come with it eventually. And then on the back, you have you know USB optical out and an LAN port if you wanna connect it directly to the internet. So that's pretty much it on the back. We should go over to the other side and plug the power cord what do you think? Let's do it. Ooh we have the power. Here we go. Let's go check out the remote. And here we got the remote from Hisense. It's pretty basic. Power button, of course, input and all that. You got your up, down, left, right, and okay, which is vitally important on these remotes today. Home button in the center underneath that, and then a back button. And then you have your channel up and down, and your volume up and down, and then some apps at the bottom. So not a whole lot of wasted space, but it's not backlit. So it's a pretty basic, straightforward remote. It'll do. Let's turn this thing on. But first, did you know that you can play really fun games in your TV? Today's video is sponsored by Crazino Slots, a super fun free to play slots game on Roku TV and Amazon Fire TV. Let me show you what Crazino Slots is about. Just go into your Roku or Fire TV and download the Crazino Slots app. And once you jump in, there's over 16 different slots to choose from, including puzzles, bingo parties, and lucky wheel spins. You can build up your bank as you complete missions and receive sweet bonuses. The great thing about Crazino Slots is that the picture is so big and clear in your TV, and you know I love big TVs. All you need is a Roku remote and a relaxing place to sit in order to play slot games like Vegas Heat, where you get the real Vegas experience from the comfort of your own living room. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I definitely recommend installing Crazino Slots on your Roku TV and using my code SLOTS7777 to get your 500,000 free coins. You can find the link in the description below. Okay, so we got through that tedious setup of the Google TV. There was a lot of different things I had to do. It was a little frustrating, but you know, you get through that one time as a consumer and you're typically good to go and you have all your apps and stuff on the OS. I did want to check out quickly to make sure that it is as bright as it can get and all the settings are, you know, in the general spot that I would want them when watching this TV. So I'm going to go in and change the picture mode, take that out of the energy saving mode because that's one of those things that if you have it disabled a bit, you know, you don't know how bright the TV actually is. It did brighten it up quite a bit. And I'm gonna go make sure that there isn't anything like that in the general settings as well. Okay, in the power and energy, there's no other features that disable the brightness. So I think we're good in that respect. So we can get back to the Google OS. And we've done a bunch of TVs that have this Google TV OS, and I really like it. It's probably my favorite among the main TV manufacturers. It has a lot of connectivity with Google accounts. So of course I have YouTube TV and all the different things that we might watch there. You have all kinds of other apps you can get. Uh, and then it does have things that you may continue watching popular movies and shows. A lot of this stuff is uh, advertisements or they're recommending things that they want you to maybe buy. And then again, back to things that you could watch live and then some different shows. And a lot of these are based on apps that I asked to download. So it has all these Disney Plus. And then it, it does have some that you didn't ask for to recommend and so on and so forth and YouTube and yeah, there's a lot of content. So, you know, you'll never be bored when you're watching a Google TV, but I'm excited to show you different content on the TV. So of course, we're gonna go into YouTube TV and check out some sports, put on a HDR movie or two, and then we'll do a couple tests to check out how the blooming control and the dirty screen effect looks before having fun with some HDR gaming at the end. So strap in and let's get to some regular sports and cable. So checking out some of the NFL highlights, sports is one of the things that I watch most and I think a lot of people watch some form of sports. If not, it's just a good representation of what you might watch on cable. And this Hisense U8H is extremely bright and vibrant. I think that's what most people would hope when you're checking out a new mini LED TV, but it is pretty remarkable. It's extremely bright. There's a lot of color to it. And some of the things that I noticed with Hisense of the past don't seem so prevalent. And one of those things is that the motion seems 
rather smooth on this TV. When I checked the settings, just the standard motion control seemed just fine for me. I remember watching the Super Bowl last year and noticing on my H9G that the motion was a little herky-jerky when watching sports. It had a hard time keeping up. I'm not sure if it was the resolution or if it was just the speed and the resolution of the game itself, but I don't notice that on any of the football content on this U8H. And Hisense has had pretty bright TVs in the past, but it does look like this mini LED TV is able to get better contrast and a bright screen. So you can see really bright highlights and really black areas on the screen at the same time, which is awesome, and that's the point of mini LED. That's why it's not so cliche when, when we have and other people have pointed out the type of work ethic that Jalen Hurts has. It's still to pay dividends for him. The sound quality in this TV is pretty solid. There are pretty good downward firing speakers as well as that subwoofer that we mentioned on the back. So it's definitely good. It sounded pretty good in game mode as well, which we're gonna show you in a bit. Another thing to look for when watching this sort of content is the resolution because this is definitely upscaling the content from sometimes 480 or even 720 up to a 4K image. And this does look pretty good. It's not the most exact I've ever seen. It's not the sharpest TV in the world, but I think it's acceptable. The 75 inch from a distance of about eight feet, I can barely see any of the issues or pixelation. And we can go in the settings and increase the noise reduction and other things to make it look even a little sharper. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this on SDR, it looks great. It did seem like when we turned on YouTube TV that there was a little bit of blooming and also there might be a little dirty screen effect or a little bit of screen uniformity issues. Those things we're gonna test in a bit, but on SDR, extremely bright picture. Let's get to an HDR movie because that's a real stress test of how bright and how much shadow detail can be shown at the same time, so let's do that. All right, now we have Disney Plus on and the movie Encanto, which is a great animated movie to show all kinds of good stuff, to show the brightest scenes, to show really tough shadow detailed scenes, and to see how bright and vibrant the picture looks. And this Hisense U8H looks amazing in HDR. It's like we're watching this movie for the first time with all of the detail. And in the bright scenes, it's as bright as any TV that I've seen this year. I've looked at the Samsung QN90B, the 900B. Overall, with just the eye test, of course, it looks fantastic. I think this TV would be hard to differentiate from any of the other major brand mini LED TVs. It looks amazing. And one thing that caught my eye, besides how bright it looks and how beautiful the color is, is how great the shadow detail looks. We play this scene, which is a very dark scene under the bed where you have darker hair and you have very difficult shadow detail. And a lot of the hair detail is lost on other TVs that really can't handle the contrast, where they just don't have both the ability to get super bright and also control control the blooming so you either get all of the detail or none of it. And in this high sense U8H, it's probably the most detailed I've seen in any TV this year. So no joke, it really seems like we're watching this scene for the first time because of how good it looks on the high sense U8H. The motion does look a little bit too fluid, a little soap opera effect. So we're gonna change those settings and see if we can make it look a little bit more like the creator intent for this movie here. So we turn the motion control completely off. And I didn't mind that to be honest. My editor, Eric, thinks that it looks a little bit too herky-jerky. We put it back on custom mode where we have both settings at three of 10. And I think that's a pretty good sweet spot for me. Typically with the LG TVs, there's kind of the same system, three of 10, same with Samsung. It seems to give a little bit more smoothing of the motion, but yet doesn't give too much of the soap opera effect. But the good news is I'm able to control it nicely on the high sense. I felt like that that was kind of a downside of the high sense of pass. I think it was the H9G where I couldn't really dial it in, but this I'm able to dial in a lot easier. And that's a great win in the motion control department, no matter how you like it, whether you don't like any enhancements, whether you like the soap opera effect or somewhere in between, I feel like it looks pretty solid. All right, so we have a widescreen movie on here just because I wanted to see how good it handles the subtitles and logos and things like that. But to my surprise, it actually has the subtitles on the widescreen part of the screen. Now there you go, it kind of jumps down below into the black bars. But there is a bit of blooming on this TV. It's difficult to judge it based on this specifically. I just kind of wanted to see and give it the eye test because some TVs may have a little bit of blooming into widescreen bars, but then on full screen content, you don't notice that. And some you can see blooming on both. I did notice a little bit on SDR when we were watching the cable, there was a little bit of blooming in the logos and just on darker shots. Uh, there is a little bit in the widescreen bars here, but I think in order for us to get the best understanding of how this blooms with the mini LED, we should throw on the blooming test. So let's do some tests because that, the dirty screen effect test, and even checking out the reflections might be a good way to see if this TV's for you. 
Okay, so we're looking at the blooming test by the Villa Man. Check his cool videos out if you get a chance. Good comparisons. Uh, the blooming doesn't look too bad straight on. I sat in front of the TV at first to look and it's on par with most LED, mini LED TVs that I've seen. Maybe not quite as good as a Samsung top end mini LED, but it's definitely better than a Sony mini LED that has a lot less dimming zones. I believe there's over 500 dimming zones in this 75 inch model. Doesn't look to me like this is an ADS panel. I think this in the US. It's definitely a VA panel, but there was some questions about that. But there is some blooming and it does get worse when you get off angle. At about a 45 degree angle, the blooming gets much worse. So if you have a very wide room and you're watching you know, dark movies from all different angles, you may have different viewing experiences depending on where you sit. If you sit straight on or even a little bit off angle, you're looking at a great picture. But if you're you know, 45 degrees or worse off the sides, it's not gonna look as good. You'll probably notice that blooming a little bit more and it could be distracting. So it's something to think about when you get this TV. But for the price, it may be tough to beat this with regards to watching HDR movies. Again, we have some other tests here we wanna check out. So let's take this testing momentum and move into the screen uniformity test. Okay, looking at this Modern Wise hockey screen uniformity test and looking at the hockey player move left and right, you can notice behind it what appears to be dirt on the screen if the screen isn't uniform. So when I'm looking at the hockey player and it moves left and right, I'm seeing larger areas that are a little bit more dim than the other areas. Sometimes it shows up as a lot of smaller clouds and sometimes it's bigger clouds that are more distracting. But I'm seeing something kind of in the left middle side of the screen that seems to be a little distracting as the player goes across. So I I would say this is about average. It definitely could be a little bit better, specifically not having the larger areas that are a little dark. And also there are some lines that are moving up and those are from the refresh rate of the camera and the LED itself. So don't be distracted by those that are moving up. That is just with the camera that we can't really get rid of on this picture. But the screen uniformity and if you see the blotchy areas on your TV can change from one screen to another, from one U8H to another. So your experience may not be exactly as my experience. And in addition, you may not even notice this if you don't check for it yourself. So it's one of those things that if you just have a TV and you want to enjoy it, this isn't the best test to check out, but if it's something that you wanna check the quality control of your TV before you own it for the next 10 years, it's a test that's available for Modern Wise. The last test we have is the reflections to see how well it handles reflections. And you know, of course we have our lightsaber colors here to give you a little red and green. These are pretty bright lights and you know, the reflection is handled pretty well. It's not like insanely bad. It does seem to be diffracting the light across the screen as some of the high-end Samsungs and Sonys do. Not to the same degree probably, but sometimes that's a good thing because if it's too much, then you get that ridiculous rainbow effect going across the screen. But this is kind of of a good balance, it's not perfect. It doesn't look like it's as anti-reflective as the OLED TVs, but the TV itself is much brighter. So if you take it to a bright scene or something with a lot of colors, it's not as noticeable. Again, these are extremely bright lights and you can barely see them in the background, but you can see them. And so you have to understand that you need to make sure that your TV is bright enough to knock down some of that reflection if the anti-reflective coating isn't strong enough on its own to beat back the reflection. So I think this has a good balance of both, good anti-reflective coating and it's extremely bright TV in general. So I think it'd be a great daytime TV and you wouldn't have to worry about windows in the background or light in general ruining the game or a movie or even gaming. And so that brings us to the last test, which is gaming. Can this Hisense U8H handle 4K at 120 and Call of Duty Warzone? We're gonna have to find out right now. Okay, we're here playing Call of Duty Warzone and it was a little difficult to get it set up at first. First I was in just the regular standard input HDMI 2.1 and you know nothing was up on screen. I was able to go into the game mode area and throw the game information up to see that it was at 60 hertz, it was not an HDR and then we were able to turn on the enhanced HDMI in order to get the HDR and Dolby Vision. But with it on, we still were not able to get 4K at 120. Uh, now I'm not like a, a gaming expert, but we were messing around with a bunch of different settings and I reached out to a buddy and was asking him and we were on both the PS5 and the Xbox where the Xbox said we were able to get 4K at 120, but when we actually tried to force it in, it was just going to 4K at 60 or 1440 at 120. So it was a little frustrating that we couldn't get 4K 120 working, but gaming looks awesome, whether it's SDR or HDR. Now we're watching it on Dolby Vision game mode and I think it looks fantastic. Again, this TV in general is super bright, but 
at the same time has amazing detail in shadowy areas. So when you're playing a game that's bright in one scene and you run into a cave or a tent and you, you can still see all the detail, that's a, a win. When playing at 4K60, it seems like there's decent control. It's, it's pretty quick and responsive. It's not perfect. I, I know that if it was 4K 120, it would be even faster, less input lag. But overall, my general experience with game mode and gaming on this TV is on par with the rest of the content we've been watching. I'm pretty happy with this TV. So I think it's time to wrap it up and kind of surmise the buying advice. So this 75 inch Hisense U8H is actually on sale right now for $14.99. Normally it's $2,100. At $14.99, it's only $100 more than the 65 inch. So that's really great pricing at the beginning of the buying season here. So if this stays this competitive, I would have to recommend it as one of the better buys in the mini LED category for the year. The 65 inch will probably get even more competitive. That's $13.99 now. Maybe you're looking at that around $1,000. I do believe that some of the other Hisense flagship chip LED TVs were around that range toward Black Friday and beyond. So I would be looking in that area. But I mean, you can't get a whole lot better with regards to brightness and shadow detail and vibrancy and just beautiful colors in a TV. As far as downsides, the uniformity wasn't perfect on this TV, could be a little bit better. And the blooming is still present, even though it's better on the mini LED than it was before. Definitely better at controlling the light and better contrast than my older H9G from Hisense. So overall, there's really not much to be upset about. This is a great budget TV. It's a great mini LED TV in general. And the fact that you get a huge discount on this compared to some of the other top major brands is a big win for Hisense. But let me know in the comments, we asked, if you would buy a Hisense mini LED TV or would you be looking for a Samsung, LG, or Sony? Definitely interesting to see the performance and price on this Hisense relative to the other three brands. Let me know in the comments and make sure to smash the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified. And thanks to Jen for helping out on this. And don't forget about today's sponsor, Crazino Slots. So much fun on your big TV. Click on the link below in order to add to your Roku TV and use the code SLOT7777 to get the 500,000 bonus coins today. And just like that, you can be the installer.